In utilizing inheritance, there are times when a parent class's behavior is close enough to what is needed in a child class, but some methods of the parent class may need to be slightly adjusted to fit the needs of the child class. We can modify and use slightly adjusted methods through a process called method overriding. Let's look at an example of this. Now up to this point in the tutorial series, we have created a two-string method in a number of different tutorials in order to print the contents of a class we were working with. We also know that all classes essentially inherit from the object class. With that said, if we hover over this line of code here, which instantiates an object from the object class, we can hover over object here, press F2, then press this button here to open declaration, or to see the actual code that makes up the object class. Once that opens, we can ignore most of what's inside this class and just scroll down to the toString method, which is here. As we can see, the toString method of the object class consists of a simple return statement that returns a class name as well as a string of numbers. What this prints out may be a little abstract right now, so let's go ahead and create a new class to see exactly what this will print out. The new class will be called computer. We won't add any code to the computer class at the moment. Instead, we'll go back to the main method, instantiate a new computer object that we will call myComputer, and we will invoke the toString method through the newly instantiated computer object that we name my computer. Now remember, even though we did not explicitly type extends object here, like such, in order to inherit from the object class and have access to the toString method, the computer class automatically inherits from the object class, as any class does when it does not explicitly inherit from any other class. Okay, so now that we know that, let's wrap the toString method in a print line statement so we can print the method's return statement to the console. Now let's run the program. We can see computer, the name of the class in which the myComputer object was instantiated from, is printed to the console, followed by an at symbol and eight more characters. We won't give the eight characters much thought here, but we can look back at the toString method of the object class and see this is exactly what we should get. Get class dot get name returns the class name, which is computer, followed by the at symbol, then the characters, which if we hover over hash code here, we see this is a hash code value for the object. All right, so we know that the toString method is accessible from basically any object that is ever instantiated. But what good is it if it just prints the name of the object class and a hash code? Well, if we look at the description for this method here, we can see that it is recommended that all subclasses override this method. And that is what we have been doing every time we have created a toString method in any classes we have created in previous videos. So let's do it again now. Going back to the computer class, let's create a toString method or override the toString method of the object class. It is important in doing so that the method we are going to write to override the method of the parent class has the same method signature as the overridden method of the parent class, meaning the method must have the same name and the same number of parameters with the same type as the overridden method. The return type must also be the same. So in this case, the name of the method is toString the return type is string and there are no parameters. Now all we have to do is add a return statement that will obviously differ from that of the toString method we are overriding of the object class. For this example, we will simply add a string of text that says, this is an example of method overriding. And now we can go back to the main method and run the program again to see that instead of the toString method of the object class being invoked, the toString method from the computer class is invoked. And we do in fact see this is an example of method overriding is printed to the console. If for any reason we create a class with a method that we wouldn't want to ever be overridden by a child class, we can ensure it does not happen by using the final modifier. For example, let's create another class called CPU. This class will inherit from the computer class by adding extends computer after the class name CPU. Let's override the toString method of the computer class within the CPU class. This toString method will return a string that says, this is the toString method of the CPU class. Let's go into the main method, instantiate a new CPU object, and invoke the toString method on the newly instantiated object, which is named myCPU. Then we can run the program. As expected, the string, this is the toString method of the CPU class, is printed to the console. However, if we go into the computer class and add the final modifier to the beginning of the toString method declaration, 
when we go back into the CPU class, we can see there is now an error. And when we hover over toString, we see cannot override the final method from computer. Therefore, if you are writing a class and include a method that you would not want to be overridden by a child class, use the final modifier in declaring the method.